Here I have program as we said that's mandatory we have the program name and we're going to end this now with a semicolon then I'm going to have the declaration So these variables now I'm going to declare them as real just in case I get a decimal value moving on to the body of our program well, one thing is missing here I need to declare a control variable for my loop so I'm going to declare a counter counter as integer so this will ensure that the program stops when this number reaches 25. So we have declared our variables. Let's show the beginning part of our body. So you know we use the word begin. Now we need to give our counter here, our control variable, a starting value. You can, your starting value can be 0, your starting value can be 25, your starting val value can be any number. Once it is that you increase it or decrease it 25 times. So in the same way, and I'll show you later on where we increment, you can decrement. So here, now we're going to say C colon equal 1. And that's my starting value then I'm going to start in a for construct and we use the word for or control variable which is C or starting value which is 1 and we want this to loop 25 times so to 25 and then do and because we have more than one instructions to be repeated we use begin and end semicolon so whatever is within the begin and the end that is what will be repeated so now we need to ask our user to enter three numbers so we use the right line or brackets and or quotations so we're going to ask the user now to enter three grades semicolon at the end of each line now let's store whatever the user enter or will enter into the three variables so now I have G1 G2, G3. If it is that you enclose your variables with your quotation, your program will run. However, when it is that you have entered the value, at that point you will get an error message. So let's remove that. Alright, so let's calculate average. So average is equal. So average now will be equal to the sum of these three numbers divided by three. Good. Now it did say that we are to output the average for each student. So we have to put the output statement now within our for loop 
So right line, open quotes. So right line, open bracket, open quotation, my descriptor. So student average is this and the variable that is storing the average so that's avg close bracket semicolon now let's show the ending part of our program we use end full stop let's compile compile successfully let's run our program enter three grades 67 90 54 so this student average is seven point. So let's tell the system now. Oops. Let's tell the system how to output the average. So we start with colon, zero, zero number of spaces, colon, two decimal space. Compile, let's run. So let's enter 78. good so the average now is 74.67 and here it will ask you to enter next set of grade and this will continue until you have entered 25 sets of grade or enter the same grades Alright, 45, 67, 56. Good. Alright. So that was our program code for this for loop. If, if it is that we did not include this output statement within our loop, what would have happened is that we would have had to enter the 25 grades let's remove it and try it the 25 grades before the system would output the average and then it would only output the average for the last person 67 90 78 going to this 25 times 1 2 3 4 5 so this would continue until we reach 25 and then it would output the last so so for this program we're going to need four variables let's declare our variables so we have var so we're going to have c size for our class size and I'm going to have and C for my counter. We declare these as integer. Then I'm going to have two other variables. One that is counting the number of persons that passed the exam and one that's counting the number of persons that failed the exam. And those will be of integer data type. So here, before we have our for loop, we're going to one, set the starting value for our control variable, which is C. C, C will be equal to one. We can't write our for construct as it because we don't know how many times this program should loop. So what we're going to do is that we're going to ask the user to enter how many students sat the exam and this will determine how many times the program loops
seven colon. Now let's store this input in the variable called C size. Okay. So now we can have our for construct. So keyword for our control variable, which is C. So for which is right here. So for C equals one to C size do. Again, because we may we will have multiple statements within or for and we want to tell the system what should be looped we use begin and end semicolon so now we need to get the exam grade so we're going to give this instruction now to the user Let's store this now in the variable. We didn't declare a variable for that. So let's go ahead and declare that. So let's have that as E, G, and declare this as real. Alright, so let's store that now. Read line. And we're going to have eg colon. So now we need to determine whether the person passed or failed the exam. Now in this case, we're going to use a selection statement, which is our if We're going statement. to have if. So the variable that we're checking, so if eg and the pass mark is 60. So if eg is greater than, so that will be 61 and upwards, but we want to include 60, so greater than or equal to 60, then we use begin, starting off our if statement, we are going to count now the number of persons that pass. So P count would be now equal to P count plus 1. So we need to set P count and F count to 0. P count equals 0. And F count equals zero also. Right, so P count equal P count plus one and then we have else which will take in the false part for this condition. So else begin. F count. We don't need to write the condition again because if it's not greater than or equal to 60 then it must be less than. So F count will now be equal to F count plus 1. And then to show the end of our if we use end semicolon. So the system said now that we are to output the number of persons that passed, the number of persons that failed, and the number of persons that took the exam. So let's output that. So we can have three output statements or we can do it in 
1 but I'm going to do it in 3 so let's write our descriptor so And we save that in this variable that we called C size. So we're going to put that variable name there. C size. Let's output the number of persons that passed. be stored in p count and the number of students that failed so let's copy this and just change the number of students that failed And that now would be in F count. Show the end of our program. We're going to have end full stop. Let's compile to check if we have any errors. Alright, so we identify one. Good. Good. Let's run this now. So number of students that sat the exam, let's say three. Enter student exam grade, 45. Enter student exam grade, 60. Enter student exam grade, 75. So number of students that took the exam, three. Number of students that passed. So we have two grades here that would be greater than one and equal to 60. And we have one person that failed successful.